I go with it, right? <laughs> Got enough folks here. It'll be fun. All right. So can everyone hear me okay still? Great. Thanks, Marianne. All right. So some new updates. Thanks for everyone for bearing with us the past two years as we've gone through a major kind of facelift, upgrade, uh, rebirth, all of what you could call this. Um, I'm Tara Mintz. I'm the Leaf Pack Network Administrator. I've been there since 2014. And um, for those of you that heard us earlier, we've got an awesome guest on here with us, Christina Medved. If you want to wave your hand, people can see you. She was the um, original Leaf Pack Network Administrator, and she was with the Stroudwater Research Center for a long, long time. And then I arrived after she left in 2014, and um, we've been kind of still working together on these things and just really excited to share with you all these new um, components of the kit, but also kind of enhancements of the program. So LeafPack has been around for 21-ish years, we think, <laughs> as a stream biomonitoring program using leaves, packs of leaves. And I'll share with you at the end of this presentation also that there's something now called the Rock Pack Network, where you can put not only leaves, but rocks inside and monitor for um, a specific type of caddis fly, the net spinning caddis fly. And that's a neat program that we also have on the Leaf Pack Network website. But LeafPack has been um, around for a long, long time. It started with our, one of our past directors at the Stroudwater Research Center, Dr. Bern Sweeney, who was invited by his ninth grade daughter's teacher to teach about stream ecology. And he wanted to do it in a really fun way um, that was engaging. And he thought about these packs of leaves, which is a professional biomonitoring method anyway. And I actually used it when I was in Georgia to monitor for salamander larvae. So it's a really cool method, um, but he brought it out and it, it's blossomed into something really useful for teachers and became an actual kit and program and network that's international. And now we've kind of expanded it to um, go even just beyond teachers, but as a baseline monitoring method that we're encouraging for public science, citizen science, community science. And it's really good for teachers, family, um, student engagement. It's good for many, many age levels. Um, we go back and forth about what age levels we're promoting, but you can take, what's good about LeafPack is you can take bits and pieces of it for just every little, you know, grade level, grade band that you're um, using and teaching, I mean. So um, you may not engage them in every single component depending on their age level, but you can grab something from this program. Like I said, it's international. I'll show you a map of where we've um, had people monitor there are on online resources I'll show you, and they're now bilingual in Spanish um, completely in the kit. We have now aligned them to the next generation science standards. I know not all states use this, but um, it's there if you need it. And then we have our e-newsletter and past e-newsletters that have been posted that have really rich information and like tidbits of wisdom from past leaf net um, leaf packers that have really good tips on say how to put out packs without them flowing floating downstream after storms so check those out and you can sign up for our e-newsletter um, we have workshops and trainings which i'll mention a bit too because we've got a lot of um, new kind of virtual experiences and resources that'll be hopefully helpful for you all engaging in leaf pack in the future um, We've got this new kit, which I can't wait to show you. We've got our website and this new database. We've been longing for this for so long, right, Christina? Um, but it's in a neat um, toolkit we call Wiki Watershed Toolkit. You've probably heard of it. If not, it's going to be great for us to introduce to you today. It's in a part of that called Monitor My Watershed. And then we've got, of course, our webinars. We're just starting to do one day virtual leaf pack workshops. I've got one for um, a teacher school district um, coming up this Tuesday, an all day leaf pack virtual workshop. And I think that's gonna work out really well. So lots that we can offer you to support you in any way that you are, whether it's in person or virtually these days. Um, but where is LeafPack Network in the world? Of course, um, a lot of it's based, all of our sites in North America, but we try to have this international spread. We just partnered with Earth Echo International who do that world water monitoring um, challenge with Philippe Cousteau's group. And so they've got a chemistry kit that you can take out and they're gonna be partnering now with us in LeafPack Network to um, collect both kinds of data. So be um, on the sites for that as we develop that relationship further, but check out Earth Echo International if you haven't already. Um, so we hope to expand this, this uh, map that you see here. But a lot of what we developed in the beginning um, happened 
not only in North America, but South and Central America as well with Stroud and partners that we have had. But as you can see with this map, most of our sites are up near Stroud, up in the Northeast, but of course this is applicable internationally um, with probably some tweaks just pertaining for your region. So, so methods overview before we go into showing you the actual kit and before hopefully the storm is hit here and hopefully I don't lose power. So if I do, I apologize. But in brief about methods, okay, it's very, very simple, but it does take some time, okay, and you need to set some dates for yourself on calendars just to keep up with, with things. But you'll select a stream site, and this should be weightable, so not above the knees, and it should be a small stream, so what we would call like a first through maybe third or fourth order. Some fifth order streams could be small and shallow too, and you can monitor those, but typically not big, deep rivers. Um, you want to target a section of the stream that's those riffles. So we've heard of pools, riffles, and runs, and we want those fast areas that have a little bit of slope going over and creating some turbulence in the stream, okay? And that's, of course, where you'll find them, the greatest diversity of macroinvertebrates, and yeah, we're targeting that because we want to um, see it with this, this one method that we're using since we're not able to go out and sample all habitats. So we're hitting, hitting that most diverse part of the stream. And if you can't do a riffle, then you can, we can consider a run, but don't really do any um, pools because they go, the packs can go anoxic and you won't really capture anything. And you'll hit, maybe you'll monitor one major riffle in your area, you can monitor more. But you'll pick a stream stretch and you'll st stick with that, okay? Um, making the packs is a lot of fun. It's really easy, but you'll typically put out in a riffle area about three to four packs within one foot of each other, and there are different ways to um, put those packs out. Typically, you want 30 grams of dry leaves per pack, but this can vary, okay? We've done some studies with actually teachers who have done some research assistantships with us, and we've found um, in our particular stream that we only really need 15 grams to get those species that we're looking for. But we recommend 30 grams for everybody. And if you're in tropical systems, then you are going to have to either double or triple or quadruple this amount because um, those leaves are so thick that one leaf might make up 30 grams. So if you're in a tropical area, reach out to me and we'll guide you on to what your weights should be. But you can vary this on your own. We recommend about 30 grams. Um, you want to take um, three dominant native deciduous species in your watershed or immediate stream area. And that's fun activity where you can go out with students and try to do this and do a survey. And the leaf pack kit comes with a little guidebook on how to identify your plant species and tree species. So, um, so that's just some general guidelines. But teachers though, we've seen, you can do an experiment with what the pack contents are. So you can do deciduous versus um, some like plastic or evergreens. Um, you can be really creative with your students doing an experiment. Um, you can do, we've had students do non-native or invasives versus natives, and that's been really neat too, projects. So um, consider that. You'll place the packs in that riffle for about three to four weeks. So you'll need to set your calendar and make sure you're out there. And we recommend, you know, that you go out once a week to make sure they're still there because life happens <laughs> in a river, as you all know. Um, when you place these packs, though, you want to make sure that they are stabilized and that they are not going to drift away. There's nothing worse than coming out three weeks later and your packs are not there. So we've come up with a few different ways to do that that are helpful, whether you use a rebar or snow stakes or something. But you want to tie them down somehow and make sure they're leveraged. Um, and we've got a video on that in our YouTube station. But you'll collect along with that some basic um, just water and air temperature. You can collect other chemistries and physical measures if you want to. That's great. So whatever you would like to take in advance of what we recommend. Um, you'll complete the forms. We've got tons of field data sheets. And then, like I said, um, you'll check these weekly and make sure they're there. Then after that time frame, you'll retrieve your packs and you'll do this, um, you know, the bunch of supplies we recommend bringing back with you and you'll take um, temperature again, you'll count how many packs you still have, hopefully you have just as many as you put out, right? So that'll be great. Um, and it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt where you go out there and you're looking for them. So I forgot when you're placing packs, make sure you um, have drawn a little map of where you've placed them and that you will be able to go back to that same exact spot to find them easily again. 
Um, so because, you know, just complete these forms after you've done retrieving them and then you can either stream side right where you collected or back at, say, like a indoor laboratory you've set up. Um, you can sort and count the macroinvertebrates. And this is where it really comes alive for students. It's so exciting, as many of you know who teach about aquatic macroinvertebrates anyway. This, this is like where it all hits the fan and it's just awesome. So. Um, They'll have special data sheets to fill out. There's a lot of um, sorting um, tools that we have created for the Leaf Pack program that will show you that are really fun and helpful. And you can probably just use things that are still in and around your classroom and garage and basement as well during this time. So this is what takes up the most time though. So you wanna be just careful that you, if you have a really diverse abundant stream, it could take an hour or two or three, depending on how many people you have with you. And then you'll calculate that index score, um, biotic index score, poor, fair, good, excellent, like many of you know, submit the data to our new portal and hopefully share that data. So that was just the methods in a brief snapshot. So let's get back to the kit, okay? What we're all here today for. <laughs> so um, this new kit we've been working on for quite some time. It's distributed by the Lamont Company. Stroud Water Research Center does not sell any of those parts. So you would go to the Lamont um, Company's website eventually to look for the codes and place the order. The Leaf Pack Network website, we do have a resources section and you go to that and it'll show you all the components. But um, if you look at this kit on the right, it has all of these components. Some of the things have changed. Um, so let me just go over a few of those. Um, the manual, we still have a manual, but now it's bilingual in Spanish. We have a new digital scale. So you can still use the old one, which I'll show you, but there's a new digital scale included because the old one, we couldn't find um, any more supplies of those. So <laughs> things change. We have a new dichotomous key, which we think you'll like. It's spiral bound and laminated. And one of those comes in the kit and you can also buy them separately as like a six pack. And there's some additions to the flashcards to reflect the new taxa that we have added and some are not there anymore. We've deleted some taxa. And then last but not least, the um, bug ID sorting sheets are have an upgrade to them too. They look very same, the same, except they now have these color colors to them. So um, let's go over to the kit. Let me see if I can like make myself, I'm gonna mute myself and head on over to the kit and like open it up so you can see some of this stuff live with me. All right, can you all hear me? Get some thumbs up. Great, thank you. So we're now in my living room. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, and let me get this kit open. So I have to, I can't lie, I've opened it before. So it's really not a reveal to me. <laughs> All right, so it comes in the same box, but it's got, again, some new components to it, which are pretty awesome. So this handy dandy new manual, and it's, it is pretty thick. Um, you can find it though online, which is awesome, and um, you can download it and check it out there. But it's really, really nice. It's got uh, the full illustrations. It's got all the data sheets, example data sheets. Everything's still great in there, but we've made some edits and added some things. Um, Oh, this is neat. So the flashcards, they're so great, aren't they? Um, but the flashcards are the same, except we've added a few new ones, okay? Um, so we've added some about freshwater mussels, which are pretty cool. We've added um, left-handed and right-hand snails, so those are still in there. Um, <laughs> Rat-tailed maggot. So this is a great one to share with your students, but it's now a new card. Put that under your pillow at night, right? And then we've got the riffle beetles. So those are just a few new ones that you'll see in the deck of cards.
who said it. Does anyone know what's in this tube? Put it in the chat box. <laughs> I know many of you just like know this program back and forth. Nice, sorting sheets. Thanks, Christina. Thanks for humoring me. But yeah, so the sorting sheets are actually really pretty awesome. They are made of that same awesome type like paper and destructible rate. Right? But we've got these three sensitivity categories, which I'll go over. I know, Kelly, I love these sorting sheets too. They're so good. Um, but they have these color coded sensitivity groups, which we'll show you later. But you can order these separately, okay? Um, yeah, this version, you're going to just love this version. It's going to be so helpful. So here's this uh, tiny little scale. So this is what we're going to use, okay? And I'll show you how to use it because you're like, it's so tiny. How am I ever going to lay leads on that? And that is a really good question. Okay. Um, but this is going to be a nice little component. Again, you can still use the old one. Um, I think I have another one somewhere. Maybe not. My whole living room is filled with leaf pack stuff right now. It's hilarious. But um, you'll put a cup on top of this and then you'll put another layer of something on top, which I'll, I'll go over in the presentation. But this is really going to be great. Handy. And let's see, everything else in the bag of goodies here is the same. Still get that awesome sieve, and you still get that awesome um, blue lens, right? Blue lens is magical. So we've got that that goes over the petri dishes, still there. Um, new component though that we've added, we get one of these, and this has been in development for a long time. Stroudwater Research Center has had a really awesome dichotomous key and we just keep um, upgrading it over and over. So now it's actually, um, you get one of these with the kit, but you can buy six of them at, and if you wanted to from the Lamont company separately. But it's got um, all the sensitivity groups that correspond now with that bug ID sorting sheet, the biotic index is synced with this, and then it's got six pages, five, six pages of macroinvertebrates, okay? And so this thing is awesome to take outside where it's gonna be wet, you know, it's laminated, so it's pretty instructive too. Um, and so that's about it with the new kit, I think, all the new things, but um, there is a new biotic index sheet too that you can get that's laminated. This is separate, it doesn't come with the kit. I wish it did, but you can get it. And you can, it's also online, you can print it, you can laminate yourself, okay? So let's head back. Hopefully that was a lot of fun. <laughs> what do y'all think about the new kit? Does it look like it's gonna be something doable and exciting? Um, we, yeah, it's been a long time for us. So yeah, long, long time. All right, so let's get back to the presentation here. Thanks for bearing with me about all this uh, technology. What has been, if you want to type in the chat box, what has been like the best part of leaf pack or the kit for you? Like what have you really, really enjoyed using? Sorting sheets, yeah, Lena, those are good. Sorting sheets, yeah, Cindy. Does anyone um, really use the flashcards, the laminated cards in the field? That's what I was just about to ask. That's great. All right. So let's get back and finish, wrap this up. So, so these data sheets, this is an example of what the field data sheet, new field data sheet looks like. And it's, um, 
got very similar information. It's going to be synced now to the data portal. So it's going to ask for site codes, and those are things that you'll create in the data portal that we will go over at some point in time. Um, it has the same information that you would ask for before, placement data, retrieval data, um, what the contents of the leaf packs are, and then site storm information. So you can record how much came down. We've had a roaring week of rain here. So, and I have leaf packs out, so I'm crossing my fingers. I got to go check on them tomorrow. So I'll be filling this data sheet out in this section, absolutely. So um, again, all this stuff can be found online. It's bilingual in Spanish, which has been really great. The site map is awesome for students to do. Again, it's something we've had before, but um, we have examples in here. So do this so that students and you can find where your leaf packs have been placed. Um, you can put lots of tidbits or like even do actual exact measurements from trees where packs have been put. So there is a new habitat survey. It's about a four page survey, okay? We had one before too, but this one has um, been revised and reflects actually more of the habitats found at least across the US, if not beyond. So it's kind of neat. It starts you off looking at in-stream. So you would be in the river looking at the habitats, pools, riffles, runs, cascades, if you have them, log stems, things are pretty big. But you would note those things if you have woody debris, all of that in-stream. And then you're gonna go to the banks um, and look at those and assess them like slope and percent covered by vegetation. So these are all really, again, great ways to get people linked to the importance of streamside forests and land use to the actual stream channel itself, that everything's so connected. You'll go into the riparian zone after you've looked at that stream bank, you'll go out deeper into the streamside forest, and then you'll get into the greater land use. So this is something you could even go online and fill out and do. Um, and then there are additional things too, if you wanted to do your average stream width and depth, velocity, discharge, you have room and space to do these calculations. This data, however, is not yet um, been created in our data portal. So you have to hold on to this for a little while until we get the next round of funding to put this into our database, but hopefully that's to come. Probably the biggest switch that I wanted or upgrade and shift I would like to mention is our new biotic index. And we had um, a great one for many, many years. It had a pollution tolerance value. It looked at abundance as well as presence absence. And we were um, looking at shifting that, but we're running, running into some challenges. So um, especially with trying to make this global because um, sensitivities vary. So we, went to kind of like, I don't want to say a simpler version, but it is in a way, it's still based off of EPA's volunteer biotic index, but we think it'll be easier, especially if you're a teacher to use it or environmental educator to use this with students. And it actually corresponds with these three now color coded sensitivity groups and they're um, colored this way so that if any, anyone is, has challenges visually with um, certain colors, they can be able to see this easily. So that's why everything has these blues and purples and oranges. So, um, but there are some shifts in the taxa. You'll notice some are there, some are not. Some have been combined and we've um, summarized all of this on our website. So if you want to take a look at it and see how this, you know, shifts and changes what you are doing, um, you can just let us know there. So, um, or just check that out, sorry. But the, the final, um, rating of the stream for fair good excellent is very similar to what it has been in the past. Um, if you are a teacher, there's this experiment summary data sheet. If you're still interested in doing that control versus experimental pack comparison, you could do that. We've got a data sheet for you um, created right there. So, and it reflects all of those sensitivity groups. And then we still have our awesome online um, biotic index calculator that we had just in the interim before we were shifting everything and people really still liked it. So we kept it. So if you, and which is great because if we're going to be doing more virtual online teaching, um, this will be nice for you to use. I've used it with some high school students teaching them macroinvertebrates and it's worked out really well that they use this calculator on their own. So um, you can check it out there on our website. Let me see if there are any questions here. I see some stuff in the chat. Let's see if anybody has anything they wanted to share. Okay. 
All right, so as I mentioned and showed you in the kit, we do have this new key, and so it reflects all the sensitivity groups. It's really, really nice. We've been using this for a long time um, with our Boots in the Water Stream Education programs at Stroud, so we think you'll enjoy it too, and being um, waterproof or water resistant is gonna help tremendously as well. And then that new bug ID sorting sheet. Also that's new is that you can, we have a water quality app and we've had this for a long time. Our um, director of education, Dr. Steve Curlin in my department came from Kentucky um, State University or KYU, sorry, and brought this app to us. And then we have advanced it so that it now syncs with the leaf pack network data. So it's like a digital data sheet. You can enter the macroinvertebrate leaf pack data. Um, you can also enter other data that you collect. So any physical, chemical, weather, site location information. And it is just like that, a digital data sheet. It has these learning pop-ups. So if you wanted to learn more about, say, a caddis fly or dissolved oxygen or E. coli bacteria, you can click on that word and it'll pop up a lot of information about what you're entering data on. So all those fields are covered. It is for Android and Apple. It does cost $4.99. That helps us keep it going, and, but then it's free after that with any of the updates you might need. Um, it mirrors, like I said, the biotic index, which is really, really wonderful. Um, we don't have it yet it's capable to be uploaded to the data portal. That's hopefully in the future, but you can export the file to uh, like a .csv and work within an Excel and make your own graphs and do whatever you want with it. So it's kind of a nice advantage. So last but not least, this new digital scale, which I went over, you can still use this awesome old postage scale, but we were limited on supplies and the mod was like, we need to find a new scale. So they came up with this new digital scale. You just need a cup and then a plastic tray. So the cup does not come with your kit. Um, it's just a plastic cup you can find anywhere you can use. And then the plastic tray that comes in your kits works well and you just put leaves on top of it. And in the new video that I made on um, making packs, I demonstrate how to use this a little bit better. <laughs> All right, so what'd you say? Do you have anything they want to say? Okay, but the new data portal, okay, it is found within our Wiki Watershed Toolkit, which is something that Stroud has created. We have received numerous awards and have put millions of dollars into this website. Um, it's got a lot of great freshwater stewardship tools in it for, um, for teachers, citizen scientists, other professionals, and more. So check it out, but we're going to be um, leaf pack is nestled there, and then the data portal that we're using called Monitor My Watershed is also there. And then you'll also see that that's where you can go for the water quality app. But our, on our leaf pack website, if you go up to the toolbar and click on data, you can also get to all this information that I'm just about to share with you because I know there are probably a lot of questions about what about my leaf pack data from the past or like what do I do? I've held on to it for a few years. Do I enter it now? What can I do with it? So I'm going to answer all those questions now, but it's all on this website too if you want to look over it. Um, but there's ways in which you can learn to look at your older data prior to like early 2020 if you wanted to look at it. We've had enormous challenges with the data and getting it into this new portal. So I'll talk about you know what to do um, from here. But you can view LeafPack data from other folks in this new portal so easily and we'll walk through that now. But entering older LeafPack data, that's where you would look at this website and go over it because um, this is the, the table that goes over all of those changes in taxa so you know what um, if you now have um, say water pennies and riffle beetles need to be separated out. They're not all together like they used to be. So just to help you kind of get in sync with all the new changes, you can refer to this table. And then historic leaf pack experiment data. <laughs> so anything from like 2001 to 2017, um, we can't directly import it. We've tried, we've tried, and we're gonna try again. We're gonna work with some more folks that might be um, might have some solutions for us, but as of right now, we're having challenges getting all that old data in there and that believe up to us is like such a bummer. So we're gonna try our best to try to get it in there. But if you would like to try to get your data into the portal, which means you might manually need to enter it or we can um, maybe large batch the file in, 
reach out to us and we'll work with you to get your data live because right now it looks like there's hardly any data in the leaf pack portal when we've had almost 20 years of it so we love to get your data in there and you can start entering your old data um, the biotic index that we're using now may be a little bit of a different message you um, some of our data have shown you've had data that said excellent before, it says excellent in this new biotic index, but like I said, this new one doesn't take into account abundances, um, and the old one did, and um, so some things have changed just a little bit in your final scoring, but you're welcome to start entering any data that you've been holding on to for a while, and this'll, this guidance here is um, something we recommend looking over and following. So how does the data portal look like? Here's just a little bit of a run through and a tour of the data portal. So again, you go to monitor my watershed. Um, you do need to sign up. This time you don't need me to approve like the administrator in the past, you would need us to approve your site request and entering your data or just your um, creation of your site. We don't need to do that anymore. So you go straight in and you're a self-authorizing site individual. So um, just sign up and you can enter your site and make your own codes for your site ID. And so it's really, really easy that way. You can also browse sites if you go up to the left. And once you click on browse sites, if you click on leaf pack data, you'll see all the sites. And as you can see, it's a little bit sad right now. There's not that many, but um, if you would click on that and click on any of these like pins, um, say we'll click on one that's with Stroud, it'll pop up this window and you can click on the view data for this site and it'll take you into a view window. So you can actually see you know, leaf back data as in the past from around the world and it'll be so much easier this time. But in viewing the leaf pack data, it'll show you all the stuff that you have entered. So all of that field data sheet information that we showed you before. And if you click on what's called view, okay, that'll get you into this particular um, view of what we entered on April 1st of last year. And it looks just kind of like any old other database, though so it's all there, but it'll show you again, it'll mirror exactly what your field data sheet and biotic index data sheets look like. So it should be seamless for entry. If you have any challenges, let us know. Um, but you can also enter the rock pack data in here, which I'll share in a moment. Um, this is what all of the macroinvertebrate count information looks like. So it's there if you ever wanted to share it with anyone and students, you can download it too if you wanted to download the data. We have um, very similar graphs that have been created as the last one, except this is a new version or new view where it actually groups them by those sensitivity groups. So it's kind of cool. It seems with um, that biotic index with those three taxis sensitivity groups. So that'll be nice for you. And we still also have that percent EPT there. And then of course this one um, where we have, let me go back every single taxa that you have found will be put in one graph, which is still, we thought was pretty interesting. So you could look at total number of individuals and um, have students look at, you know, what was the predominant one there? What was the least common? And then you can also still enter comments if you'd like to about that site and that data. Okay. Um, we're almost in the home stretch. Thanks for sticking with me. <laughs> so community connections and support. Um, of course, we're on Facebook and we have our YouTube station. Our YouTube station is brand new as of this past week. And we already have some um, really great video tutorials for methods on there. I still got to get the other two up, but we've got um, a few videos on how to make packs and how to place the packs. And this is from White Clay Creek. So Christina, you'll love seeing your own sampling grounds. Um, then we've also got these uh, macroinvertebrates in motion videos. And so I'm adding to these two, but these will, we're trying to get one video of every taxa on our biotic index so that you'll have some like the one behind me. Um, this is an example of one of those where you can show students and um, if you needed a virtual experience with macroinvertebrates, this is how to do it. So we've got some of those available for you. Trying to support everybody right now. <laughs> But also, um, I think everyone here that's on Zoom obviously has signed up for our e-newsletter. All right, last but not least, some cool extensions of Leaf Pack. We've got now Rock Pack. <laughs> and this is not a new method either, but we had a National Science Foundation um, working with a grant working with University or Montana State University on a project um, with some of our stream geomorphologists creating a special monitoring program that focused on the net spinning caddis fly. 
And if you go to um, Leaf Packs website, there is a special Rock Pack section now. So you can check out, we've got all kinds of um, awesome up close images of net spinning caddis fly nets. We've got lots of um, lectures and videos from a few women in STEM, great scientists that they can learn from, as well as a summary video about the net spinning caddis fly. Um, we've got an awesome, like a new manual on how to monitor and teach about net spinning caddis flies. So it's really, really great to check that, that site out. Many of you have probably already seen this website, macroinvertebrates.org, another National Science Foundation project we've been working on with 3D gigapan images of macroinvertebrates like up close and personal. So you don't even have to use a microscope, but that's a site that on their resources page has a lot of good stuff from posters to images you can use, um, ID sorting sheets. They also have a key that's nice and live and digital that you can use as well as presentation slides you can steal from and some teacher resources that are actually coming down the pipes. And there's a practice quiz on this page too. So if you're doing leaf pack with students, you can go hop to this quiz that's on macroinvertebrates.org and have that as part of your experience. Uh, last but not least, we have some of these um, 3D printed macroinvertebrates. So we worked with a local high school and they designed all of the like foundational um, programs for these. And we have about, I think, 12 of these up there um, that you can have printed. And then we had the art group actually paint them for us. So now we use them when we teach people about macroinvertebrates, we can point to the wing pads a little bit easier or the two tarsal claws versus one. Um, and they're just, they're just awesome to have at public events too. So now you can go and get the um, program and download it from a space called Thingiverse with an I and download them. And then of course you need to paint them if you wanted to make them real life. But we've worked with local schools to do this. And a lot of them have 3D printers and then art groups and you can shoot them over to macroinvertebrates.org so they know how to paint them um, anatomically correct. So, but I think that is it. Um, thank you so much for being on today. I'll stop my, my share here and the recording and just see if anyone has any questions.